Hi friends, my name is Scott Gentry. I'm the senior pastor here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church and I wanna welcome you to our national day of prayer, prayer service. Um, many of you know this, others may not. The National Day of Prayer is an annual observance. It's held on the first Thursday of May, and it invites people from all across the United States uh, to come together to pray for our nation. It was first created back in 1952 through a joint session of Congress and signed into law by uh, President Harry S. Truman to become a national observance. And this observance has great significance for us. It, it allows us to recall and to teach the way in which our founding fathers sought God's wisdom and guidance when they faced critical decisions. It reminds us to, to come and to humble ourselves before God, seeking his guidance and to pray for our leaders and for areas of influence across the United States. And just this observance today, again, is a reminder to all of us how important this annual day of prayer is. It's just as important today as when it was first founded. Uh, it, like Thanksgiving, like Christmas, the, the National Day of Prayer, I mean, it shows up on Hallmark calendars. It's celebrated all across uh, the United States. It's celebrated locally on the state level and on federal levels, it's all the way from sunrise in Maine to sunset in Hawaii. Uh, Americans from uh, all every kind of background imaginable come together and pray for our nation. Now, by focusing to this particular prayer service, how we're doing, praying online, it's very interesting. This may be the largest observance of this National Day of Prayer in history as people come together and pray just like we're doing in groups or praying individually. The theme set for this National Day of Prayer comes from Habakkuk 2.14. The theme is pray God's glory across the earth. And that scripture says this, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so in these unprecedented times this uh, we're facing with uh, this current crisis, it calls for unprecedented prayer. And the way that we'll be praying tonight and what we're in, people all across the United States will be doing during this, uh, this prayer observance is focusing on prayer for seven centers of influence in the nation. Those seven centers of influence are these, government on the federal, the state, even the local level, uh, our military, our media, business, education, church, and family. And our nation needs God's help uh, to see us through this uh, coronavirus crisis in all areas uh, of these seven areas of influence. I wanna share with you another scripture before we move into some time of praying together, and it's Psalm 62 verses five through eight. The word says this, yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. So I invite you now as we join together to pray, I have leaders from our church that will be guiding us in prayer through these seven areas of influence. And uh, make the, as you hear their prayers, make them your own, pray your own prayers. Uh, but let's uh, now come and pour out our hearts to God and pray for our nation. So as we begin to pray for these seven areas of influence, uh, I'm gonna begin by praying for our government leaders. I'll let you know that after each of these prayer segments, uh, each leader that will be uh, praying for these specific areas, we're gonna provide a time, about a minute, it's time of just quiet reflection for you just to continue on uh, in your own prayers. Uh, but join with me now as we pray for our government leaders. God, you've commanded Christians everywhere to pray for people in authority. Uh, they need our prayers, they need you, they need your wisdom and guidance. And so uh, as we begin to pray, we do lift up leaders, uh, Lord. Uh, we lift up leaders on a national level, like our president, President Trump and Vice President uh, Pence. Um, we pray, God, that, that they would be seeking you for wisdom and that you would give them wisdom to lead. We can't even begin to comprehend the complexity of trying to, uh, to lead a nation and then a nation that has such influence in the world. So we do lift them to you in prayer tonight, asking that they would humble themselves before you, that they'd be calling out to you earnestly, 
as they try to find the solutions to lead us through not only this time of crisis, uh, thinking about the economy of the nation, but all of the other uh, just myriad concerns that are on their shoulders each and every day. So we pray for them, Lord, for your help, uh, again, that they would be seeking you earnestly. We pray for other people in our federal government, too. We pray for leaders like Secretary Alex Azar uh, of Health and Human Services, Secretary of the Treasury Stephen Mnuchin. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, with his coronavirus task force, your continued leadership uh, in his life. Uh, we pray, Lord, for governors across our nation, for mayors across our nation. We lift up specifically when we think of Gretchen Whitmer here in Michigan. Continue, Lord, to give her wisdom to navigate through this time. Uh, we pray for all of the, the leaders in Congress, both federal and state, that they would be united as they work together to try to find solutions to the problems that, uh, are, that they are facing and that we're facing as an entire people and then as a state. Uh, Lord, give wisdom throughout this entire process. We pray for their physical health and well-being, their emotional health and well-being, and certainly, Lord, their spiritual health, that they would be calling upon you for strength, for guidance. We pray, Lord, for their families and for of these leaders who are making such tremendous sacrifices that they would be well and cared for. Lord, we pray for government leaders around the world that are trying to work cooperatively, not just with the coronavirus, but just the concerns of of uh, working together with other world leaders uh, to care for their own people. Uh, we pray specifically that there would be a spirit of uh, cooperation uh, between these leaders. And we pray that specifically, Lord, when we think back on both with our nation federally and state levels, uh, this spirit of cooperation where partisan politics will be set aside to unite uh, for a common purpose uh, to, uh, to care for the needs of, of the country, to care for the, the needs of their people. Lord, I just am reminded of the scripture in James 5, uh, 16 that tells us that, you know, that, that prayer of a righteous person uh, really does accomplish much. And we believe, Lord, that uh, because of Jesus, that we have the righteousness of Christ in us. So we believe our prayers do make a tremendous difference. We thank you, God, that you are a God who hears our prayers. You're faithful to your promises to listen to the prayers of your people and to act uh, in uh, out of the, the goodness of your heart uh, for their good and for the good of the world. Father, as we pray for these government leaders now, both federal, state, local leaders as well, we are just asking, Lord, as you put them in these places of authority, that uh, they would seek you, that they would receive wisdom from you, and that you would raise up those that would accomplish your will, Lord. And then if there are those that would be working against your will, uh, we pray in your own uh, timing, in your own way, that you would place others in their place so that uh, your glory would be uh, spread among the nation, among the states, and even in our own cities. So hear our prayers, Lord, as we continue to pray for those who give leadership to our nation, to our state, to our cities. Hello, church. I'd like to take this opportunity, especially this special opportunity during this time to say a prayer during a National Day of Prayer for our military and our military family. So I would like to take this moment to be able to do that. 
So dear Lord, we thank you so very much for this opportunity to be able to have this National Day of Prayer. Lord, we ask you to be with our military families and that they have this courageous independency on God during this time, Lord not just during their military service, but also during this coronavirus that they may be dealing with as well, uh, wherever they're stationed, as well as uh, the families that are apart from them as well. We ask, Lord, also that their uh, perseverance during this uh, hardship of being away from their families, Lord, and the families themselves, that uh, they have the strength and the ability to get through this as well. And we also ask for, as always, a divine protection uh, for them during this time, Lord, and protect them during whatever fights that they're in the middle of. Uh, we ask for wise leaders to be with them during these decisions and that these soldiers uh, take this time to be able to hear what their leaders are saying and to follow forward with them. Also, Lord, we ask for confidence and vision to persist in the face of um, any negativity that they're dealing with at this time, Lord, that, for example, a National Guard might have been pulled up during one of these coronavirus situations and they're receiving some negativity. We ask you, Lord, just to be with them. We ask you to be with those families as they deal with this. And we ask you, Lord, to guide them through this difficult time. And also, as always, Lord, protection uh, to support the families that they have left behind, as always. And we also ask you, Lord, that this sometimes is people tend to forget about is the chaplains um, in the service, Lord, that you're with them. Give them the strength and the ability to be able to get through these times. Lord, that you're with them and give them the right words and message to provide uh, to these uh, military soldiers during this time, as well as the families, Lord, that this can be difficult um, in all forefronts for everybody. Lord, and we are just gracious for this opportunity again to take celebrate the National Day of Prayer, and to celebrate our military family always uh, during any time, Lord. Amen. Hello all, my name is Laura. I am the children's pastor here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us for National Day of Prayer. Um, right now I'll be focusing on a prayer for businesses across the U.S. I'll be praying both for local businesses and um, larger businesses. We know that this has taken a toll really on a lot of people. Small businesses are going under, larger businesses are going under as well. Uh, J. Crew, the clothing brand just announced bankruptcy due to COVID-19. And so a lot of people are being impacted in a lot of different capacities by this. And so we're just gonna pray for, um, for businesses on all levels. So join with me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you today and we are just overwhelmed, God, by everything that's going on. I know that's going on in so many of our hearts, Lord. And we just pray right now for wisdom and discernment for um, CEOs and small business owners, Lord God. Um, for small business owners, this is challenging because it it is their income, Lord Jesus, and they um, are relying on their businesses. And for so many people with small businesses, this is a dream of theirs um, to have this business and to watch it go under. Lord God, is so challenging and to know that they rely on their small business and the opening of their small business um, to feed their families, to house themselves, all of those things, Lord God. And so we just ask that you would wrap your arms of comfort and peace around them and that you would just provide for their needs. Um, 
and we pray for the larger businesses as well, for the CEOs and people who make decisions regarding the opening of those businesses and the financial means of those businesses, God. And we pray for um, wisdom and discernment for them as well. We lift up the people who work for those companies, um, especially companies that are going under God, who now these people are are left without jobs, the retail workers and um, people who are further down in the company, God, but this is still greatly affected by them. And we just ask that you would provide for their needs as well. Give them a sense of peace. Um, and just as we're going to be seeing a lot of businesses close their doors, we just ask that um, some way, somehow you would be able to preserve those businesses, that they would be able to open soon, um, safely, of course, and just ask that uh, the needs of the people would be able to be met. In your precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Laura, and I am going to be praying um, specifically for media. We're going to be looking at both the news media and social media. This virus has taken such a political turn, uh, which I think is something that I know I did not expect. Um, and it has just, things have gotten ugly. And we see on our news media outlets... Um, two different news medias that report the same story with completely different information and perspectives. And it's become this point where our ability to discern truth has become so clouded. And so um, we've just gotten to the point where we can't pick out what is true and what is not. And that has become just excruciatingly frustrating. Um, I know for people like me, and I'm sure probably for you as well, you just, you turn off and you get to the point in the news where you're just like, turn it off. I can't take it anymore. I don't know what to believe. I don't know what is truth. And so we're just going to be praying that God um, will give us the ability to discern what is truth and what is not, even if the truth isn't what we want to hear, but that news outlets will, um, will give us the true story, the whole story. Um, and be honest with us. And then for social media, we're going to be praying um, that people would use social media as a platform to encourage and uplift and to speak kindness. I know that I have, um, I have Facebook friends that fall all over the spectrum with perspectives on this virus and policies regarding it and all of those different kinds of things. And it can be so frustrating because people are just at it with one another and so we're going to pray for unity and that we'll use social media to be um, a positive outlet for um, this and that we'll use it to speak kindness and encouragement into one another instead of tear one another down so let's go to the god in prayer lord jesus we come before you right now we ask first and foremost for um your safe uh, for safety for um, the people who are bringing us the news, God. Uh, some are bringing them from their homes, but some are bringing them from right on the front lines. And so we ask for their physical safety for them as they as they bring us the news. We thank you for what they do, and we just ask that you will give us as watchers of the news the ability to discern the truth within these stories, God. Um, it's become so frustrating when little bits of the truth are told in this mound of lies, God, and but help us to just distinguish that, to, to um, distinguish the truth, whether we like what the truth says or not, 
God and just that news media sources will will give us the truth that the truth above all else prevails God and um, we just ask that um, this virus will become less of a political game and we can be united in fighting this virus Lord God and we pray for social media um, as it has become such a battleground God and we just ask that we um, as people of the church will use social media to encourage and uplift people not tear people down, not um, disregard their beliefs, not use it for our political ploys, Lord God, but that we would speak truth as well and um, just be kind to one another. Lord Jesus, these are our, um, our prayers and we bring them to you, knowing that you are the God of truth, that your word gives us truth, and we just ask that, um, that you be with us in this time, that the truth would just prevail above all else. In your name I pray, amen. Hello everyone, I'm Michael and I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. The next area we're going to pray for as a community of God, as a body of believers on this National Day of Prayer, is education. So the whole educational system has been thrown a giant curveball this school year. And we're now anticipating the changes that might take place in the next. So we have the veteran homeschool parents who have wisdom to share. But they're still missing things like their uh, co-op groups and other groups like that, and they're still feeling the burden. We have involuntary homeschool parents who are experiencing truly how valuable our teachers really are. And we have teachers, professors, support staff, and administrators who might be laid off or furloughed or doing so much more than they already do to make this distance learning a possibility. We have students who miss their friends and the learning environment that they're used to. Uh, we, we could keep naming people and groups in the, our educational system who've been affected by this, but we'd need to maybe get a chalkboard out or maybe a smart board, depending on your school system, uh, to really keep that list going. There's just so many different ways where we've been affected. So will you join me as we pray for education in America today? Let's pray. God, we come before you right now and we pray for our, our teachers in this uncharted territory, God. May you continue to guide them and lead them and may your will be done in this situation, Lord. We uh, pray for both our homeschool veterans as well as our parents who find themselves navigating, uh, um, helping their kids with this distance learning while working for home or looking for a job or navigating unemployment. Uh, we pray for our, our families that rely on, on school lunches and we thank you uh, for the systems that have been in place and are being figured out as we pray, Lord, to provide these. We pray for a safe atmosphere at home. In many homes, tensions uh, have been rising and, and families feel uh, they're feeling the stress. We pray for a safe atmosphere that's conductive, Lord, for learning. We pray for our support staff and for our, our administrators, and we thank you for their service. We pray for any funding issues and concerns that have been caused by this outbreak and shutdown. We also, Lord, we pray for our students who have, <clears throat> who have had their, their school year uh, upheaved and their sports canceled. Uh, students who are unable to see their friends at school. We pray for our seniors specifically who are, who are missing out on so many things that are, are milestones in their lives that we've grown to expect. May you work in their lives and encourage them, Lord, and give them a strength and perseverance. 
We also pray for doors to be opened and for increased opportunities for the church to support our school systems and to, for our, our churches to be able to minister to our teachers, to their staff and students and families, God. Bless us in this way, and we thank you, Lord, that you're on the move in these situations. We pray for our educational system in the United States. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next, we're going to pray for the entire body of Christ, the church, the capital C church, all around the world. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14 tells us, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So church, we are one body. We are one church, though we are made up of churches, made up then of followers of Jesus. You know, the, the ministry, ministry can, uh, calendar that I made this year has been thrown out the window. I'm sure a lot of pastors are experiencing that. But God has given me a new focus, and God has given all of us a new focus. So pray with me as we seek out God's guidance in ways to be the body of Christ in times like these. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you now and we pray for your church, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for, for unity and purpose and mission. And may the parts of the body come together in this great time of need. We pray for opportunities to be your hands and your feet and the vision to see these things through. We pray for any church, Lord, that has budget issues right now and, and, and where they don't know maybe how they can make the ends meet in the next couple months, Lord, or how they can pray, uh, pay for their staff or, or their building, Lord. Uh, we pray that you will work in these budget issues, God, for these churches. We pray for uh, pastors and for ministry directors, Lord, who uh, um, are, are going on the fly and doing something new because they've never uh, been this way before, Lord. They, they uh, don't know where to turn, but they, they turn to you and they move forward anyway, Lord. We thank you for these trailblazers, God, and bless them as they continue to move forward in your name. We pray for our office administrators, God, who uh, their job description changed a couple months ago, and uh, the situation might be tense or, or troublesome, but, but we pray that you will be with them every step of the way. We pray for any committees or board members or boards making decisions and leading in a time where we indeed, we, God, we have not been this way before and we need your help, we need your guidance. May we search for you and follow after you, Lord. Guide us and bless us in this way. May we follow after you. May we fall more in love with you, Jesus. Guide us and lead us. Lord Jesus, we pray all these things in your name. Amen.
Hi, I'm Kelly Satterfield, and let's pray for our families. Father God, we just ask that you would just come alongside our church families, Lord, as we are into something that we've never had to experience before. We know, Lord, that you know the dynamics of each home that's represented. We know that you know everything that we're going through and facing, Lord. But I pray for each specific family in our church, Lord, that you would just bless them, that you would be the provider and sole provision for what they need, Lord. I pray that families are strengthened during this time. I pray that they would uh, band together, that they would find new hobbies and new ways to overcome challenges, Lord. I pray that they would find new forms of communication, that they would hone in on those skills, Lord, and just that you would give them the tools necessary to um, handle squabbles and to handle the things that come up, Lord, in a healthy and biblical way. I pray that you would be with the parents of the children, Lord, that they would be guided and directed in a way that only you can be, um, that can only be from you. I pray that you would give them support and help and uh, be their helpmate to them now, Lord, as they go through these trials. I pray that you would help them to be teachers to their children, Lord, and I pray that you would give them the tools that they need to provide these services. Lord, I pray for their financial strains, Lord, that you would give them what they need and that they would, um, in turn, Lord, just uh, just reap a harvest that is overflowing. Lord, I pray for um, the families in our nation, Lord, that these families would be drawn together and that through these new protocols and through these new things that we've been having to do, Lord, that families are bound together closer than ever before, that we would come together as a nation because these families are strengthened, Lord, and that we would um, train these children in the way that they would go and that when they are older, they will not stray from it and that we will reap these benefits when we get older, Lord, because we will see that in those times when we were drawn together, when we were forced to be together, Lord, under these circumstances, it's when you were able to quiet them down, Lord, and to show them the way that you would have them go that is biblical, Lord, and is is the way that um, you want for these families. I pray that you would just encourage one another, Lord, and encourage us today because it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hi, church family. Uh, Pastor Scott asked me to lead a section on prayer uh, specifically for the coronavirus epidemic. Uh, This has been a very confusing and uncertain time for all of us, and for some, even a very difficult and dark time. One of my favorite portions of Scripture uh, over the years in these types of situations comes from Second Chronicles chapter 20, and I'd just like to share a few verses with you as we go to the Lord in prayer uh, in how to direct our thoughts and our prayers. Uh, this was a time when God's people were facing certain annihilation by approaching enemy ar- armies and were called together uh, for corporate prayer at the temple. And in verses 5 and 6 of chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat starts the prayer with these words, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. He goes on to outline the specific details of their uh, 
uh, disaster that they're facing and concludes in verse 12 with these words. For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Please pray with me as I lead. Pray along with me as our eyes are on Jesus in these uncertain times. Father in heaven, our God, ruler of the universe, all-powerful, our Savior, you are mighty, you are in control, you know the way ahead. But Father, in so many ways, we and the leaders of our nation do not know what to do. And we turn our eyes upon you and bring these prayers before you. Father, we would pray first for the thousands of people that are sick and suffering with the coronavirus at this very moment. We pray for their families. We pray for those caring for them, the healthcare workers, at the risk of their own lives. We pray for the families of those who have died. We pray for the families and friends of those who are yet to die in this epidemic. Father, bring them your peace. Bring them your comfort and let them know you as Savior. Father, we pray for others in our communities who are putting their lives at risk by providing for our needs, whether they be healthcare workers or grocery workers or bus drivers or police or fire firemen. Father, we thank you for these people. We pray that we would uh, cooperate with them pray that we would show gratefulness. We pray that you would protect them and provide for their needs. Jesus, we pray especially for those who are suffering financially in these times, the great uncertainty about the future, maybe even wondering where uh, resources will be coming for bills that are looming at the end of the month. Father, provide for their needs. Let them see your hand Father, lead in this area. Father, we do not know everybody. We know people in our own small circles in these categories, but you know their names, Father. We bring them to you now. We lay them at your feet and ask for your healing, your peace, your protection, and your provision. And together, Father, we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for our leaders in government at all levels, whether it's state or county or national. We pray for your wisdom and your guidance in knowing the best actions when the way is not clear. We pray that they might have unity in this battle against this epidemic rather than dissension and blaming. Father, we pray that there would be clarity and guidance over an effective treatment and vaccine. Father, we lay this at your feet again, not knowing exactly how to pray, but you know what is needed. And we pray together, Father God, hear our prayers. Lastly, Father, we would bring our church body to you, our family at Ferndale, and for all of those who call upon you as Lord in our nation. Father, open our eyes to opportunities where we can serve each other and our families and our neighbors and give us the resources and the strength to do this in your name. Jesus, we would pray especially that you would renew us in your love and that that love would flow through us and draw others to you. We pray especially that you would give each of us compassion for those with whom we disagree. And Lord, let the words of each of us and all of our actions be said and done in Jesus' name, in your name. Lord, we know there are many other requests and burdens on hearts tonight, 
and we present them to you, knowing that you are aware and that your Holy Spirit is praying for us in this very moment. We thank you for the opportunity to join together in prayer tonight. Lord, we trust for your provision and guidance. We ask your strength, especially in those times when we don't see that presence or guidance or provision, or we don't feel it at the moment. Father, in many ways we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We worship you and we trust you, and we ask these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. As we conclude this time of, of our prayer gathering tonight, uh, I want to share with you a prayer that uh, was actually written for this National Day of Prayer. And so uh, let me share this with you now. Lord, we exist to give you glory. We exist because of your glory and in your glory as our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. We give you thanks and praise for every breath and moment that you've given to us. We repent of our sin for the shameful things we've done against you and for our silence when we did not speak up to proclaim your name, profess your word, or protect and practice your will. We ask your forgiveness. We pray that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will spread across our nation and the entire earth as we seek your kingdom and righteousness, as we walk in obedience to you and in humble unity love one another. Jesus, the Bible says that you are the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. You have taught us to pray, commanded us to love, and commissioned us to share your gospel of grace. Your glory fills our hearts and families. It overflows into our neighborhoods, workplaces, campuses, churches, entertainment, and media. We give thanks for our military and ask that your glory would spread to and through them as they preserve freedom around the world. We pray for our government, that all of our leaders and laws would be filled with your glory, that they would magnify your holy word and honor your will and ways. We pray that your grace and glory would spread to bring hope to the hopeless and love where there is hurt and hate. God, use us as we pray your promise that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In Jesus' name, amen. So I thank you again for joining us this evening for this time of prayer. There are other prayer opportunities that will be going on through this evening at 8 p.m. If you just go to, on, on your computer, National Day of Prayer, there is going to be a live stream event that will go from 8 until 10 p.m. with leaders across our nation. If you would like to be part of that, I encourage you to join in that time of prayer and celebration as well. God bless you. I look forward to worshiping with you this coming Sunday here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church.